Hello YouTube! Today I would like to invite you to a longer adventure and show you the progress on my largest cosplaying project so far. A full costume of Tali Zora from Mass Effect I am preparing for my girlfriend. I expect it to be a multi-part video series and will start with the most important element of the cosplay, the female Quarian helmet. In the first episode of the Tali cosplay series, I will focus on the core elements of the helmet, 3D modeling, 3D printing, assembly, painting and the electronics. Let's dive in to see how it went. When I first started the project I was hoping someone else had already made a 3D printable model of Tali's helmet. Unfortunately nothing I found was close enough, so I prepared to do some digital 3D modeling myself. The best available model was the one made by Rainy Fire from Thingiverse. Some details were off though. It didn't cover the lower part of the face well enough and parts of the geometry were intersecting each other in very weird ways, which would be not suitable for 3D printing. I based my model on two sources. I used Rainy Fire's helmet as a general frame and I also used the in-game Tally model extracted from Mass Effect 3 for the rest. I adjusted the scale to fit a generic female head. On the inside there is enough room for all the electronics and cables, and the helmet tightly fits even me, uh, but if you would like to print it for a large male head, I would recommend making everything 5% larger. Some elements, like the front of the helmet and the emergency induction port, were modeled in SketchUp, and the rest was made in Blender. I fixed the weird geometry of Rainifier's model, added the missing details, and extended the shell to better hide the face of the wearer. The model was split into 10 parts suitable for 3D printing. I will release all the model files to my Thingiverse for free once the second helmet video is ready, so stay tuned for the next episode. I printed the parts in black PLA since I needed the interior of the helmet as dark as possible for the mirror visor to work well. This way I could just leave the inside unfinished and didn't have to waste more black paint. Printing all the parts took around 60 hours on my Prusa i3 clone. Once the parts were ready, I temporarily glued them together to roughly check if all the proportions were correct. Then I took it all apart to sand any bigger imperfections with a Dremel and a Nile file. When it looked okayish, I glued everything back together. Contrary to my previous N7 helmet, which I glued with UHU glue, this time I used Ciano Acrylic Super Glue, which gave me more stiff connections. Later, I reinforced the joints with some epoxy resin and sanded the joints down to hide them as well as possible. Now was the time for painting. To prepare the PLA for the next layers of paint, I sprayed the helmet with acrylic primer. Then, I applied a rather thick layer of automotive putty spray and this filled most of the imperfections left over from 3D printing. The filler was polished with small grain sandpaper. Since the filler putty is rather soft, it again needed to be coated with a layer of acrylic primer before I could mask the interior with paper towels and masking tape to paint everything with the final layers of shiny silver paint. The most satisfying part of the painting was, of course, the removal of the masking to reveal the black interior of the helmet. The shiny helmet was very pretty, but since Tali went through a lot during her pilgrimage, her helmet needed to be a bit more rough. To age and weather the helmet, I just scratched it with a nail file to reveal the black primer underlay. The weather helmet looks way more lively and less sterile than before. To prepare myself for Tali's visor in my previous N7 helmet, I mounted an experimental voice-activated circuit to control the lamps mounted in the front. My name is Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite stall on the Citadel. 
Thanks to this prototype, it was quite easy to assemble the electronics in the final Talis helmet. Uh, in this one I made a few improvements. The whole system is powered by two 9V batteries instead of one, and a large capacitor is added to smooth out the readings from the potentiometer controlling the brightness. I also increased the size of the fan from 30 to 40 mm. Here is the electronics diagram if anyone is interested in wiring of something similar. The Arduino code installed on the board is quite simple. Feel free to pause the video if you would like to copy it. When the second episode of the series is released, I will probably post the full code on my Arduino project hub. According to the diagram, all the wires were soldered together. As you can see in the in-game model, exported from Mass Effect 3, under the hood, Tali has these two pipes connecting the front of the helmet to the back. This was very useful for me, since I needed to cleanly route the cables from the microphone, the emergency induction port and the fan in the front, to the Arduino, batteries and the potentiometer in the back. The pipes look really nice and thanks to them I can save a lot of precious space on the inside. As you can see in the demo, the lighting system works quite well. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. So, that would be all for today. The rest of the build totally deserves a separate video on its own. Tune in for the next episode in which I will attempt to make the hardest part of the helmet, the visor, using a homemade DIY vacuum form for 15 euro. Will I succeed? Spoiler alert, of course I will. Thanks for watching and see you next time.